Welcome to the Gray Area Podcast Live. My name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre and post game host on 97 One, the Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here on my YouTube channel at Kevin Gray Sports, a live pop up show. I didn't get a chance to do a podcast on Monday. Normally, I have my podcast episodes drop on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and wasn't able to get one in on Monday. So I figured. Let's do a surprise pop-up show, and let's talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. And I don't normally do Q&A shows or anything of that nature, but I figure, why not? An opportunity to be able to hang out with y'all for a little bit. A lot going on with NFL free agency. The Dallas Mavericks having won three straight games. The Cowboys staying in the news. Dak Prescott obviously in the news as well. So there's a lot going on that I figured. Why not hop on on a Tuesday evening just to have a little chat with y'all and see what y'all wanted to talk about as well. So if you want to, you can leave comments in the chat, questions in the chat as well. You can also throw them up on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you like and comment on the video as well. You can also subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports and you can also download the Gray Area Podcast wherever you get your podcasts for free. Give it a five-star rating, write a review for it while you're there, and uh, check out the Gray Area Podcast. And you can also listen to my Inside the Mavs podcast that I do as I'm the Mavericks pre- and post-game host on 97.1 The Freak, wherever you get your podcast for free, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. You can download Inside the Mavs there. So if you want to, leave a comment in the chat. You can leave a super chat in there as well. You can have your questions answered. Get it thrown up to the top if you want to as well. As I got a lot to get into, because if you follow me on Twitter, you know I have thoughts. I have thoughts when it comes to the Cowboys and their free agency. If you missed my episode last week with Michael Gelkin of the Dallas Morning News, kind of gave you an idea how this thing was going to go for the Cowboys and free agency, and they have done diddly poo Jim Mora so far in free agency, which really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone Because if you look at the Cowboys, they've been kicking the can down the road for the last three years, and now that can is finally kicking them back in the ass, and they haven't been able to do anything in free agency. A team that only had $2.2 million coming into NFL free agency this offseason, and so far they haven't done anything except for re-sign their long snapper. So, again, this is all under the backdrop, and trust me, we're going to get to Dak Prescott, We're going to get to a lot of what's going on because that has obviously been a huge topic of discussion today with the lawsuit that has been filed by him when it comes to a sexual assault allegation that has been levied against him. We'll get into all of that throughout the course of the show. But obviously for the Cowboys, it's something that should have been anticipated if you've been watching this football team and how they've been moving over the last few years as far as free agency and more importantly, their salary cap management. They're at a point where they're not just looking at 2024. They're looking at 2025 as well. Because, yeah, the salary cap exploded this year to allow a lot of teams to have a lot more room to be able to sign free agents. Washington, where Dan Quinn looks around and finds an ex-Dallas Cowboy, says, oh, yeah, bring bring, bring Dante Fowler. Uh, bring Yeah, bring Dorrance Armstrong over here. Uh, oh, yeah, Tyler Biotis, you can come on over here, too as they are now members of the Washington Commanders. So Dan Quinn hadn't seen an ex-Cowboy he hasn't liked, and he's signed them so far. But the Cowboy is simply not in a position to sign really any of those free agents, and you're seeing why. Now, they could, if they wanted to, could pull a lever, and for Dak Prescott's contract, free up a bunch of money in order to maybe sign some folks, but that also means kicking the can down the road once again. And the Cowboys simply don't feel like that that's the right thing to do, given the position that they're in right now, not only because they've got Dak Prescott's contract to worry about, they've got CeeDee Lamb's contract to worry about, and that's right, Micah Parsons, who will probably become the highest-paid defensive player in the history of the NFL, they got to worry about that too. So they may move on from – they're going to move on from Michael Gallup, it looks like. And for more importantly, going forward for the rest of the year – Who knows what moves that they'll need to make because right now they need a new left tackle. If they don't bring back Tyron Smith and they don't move Tyler Smith over to left tackle, they need a new center because I mentioned Tyler Biotis is gone. They need a new linebacker. 
They could use probably another safety. Oh, that's right. They need a new running back as well because Tony Pollard is taking his talents back home to Tennessee to go play with the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, the Cowboys need a whole bunch of stuff. And for someone named Jared, Gerald Wayne Jones, who has said that the Cowboys would be in all in this year, it's simply not the case. But the Cowboys have got a lot of things to figure out, among other things, throughout the course of this offseason. Before we go any bur- further, let's take a quick break here on the Gray Area Podcast Live. Let's hear from today's sponsor of our video in Aura. Today's video is brought to you by Aura. Do a Google search on your name and email address to see how much information comes up about you. I was devastated by the amount of information that I could be seeing searching my name and profile, and I knew then I needed to be protected for not just myself, but also for my family. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats that I can't see. It's really easy to set up, so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work to protect me and my family so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Kevin Gray to start your two-week free trial. Please see the link in the description. Back here on the Gray Area Podcast. Appreciate you hanging out with me through that quick break. And thank you to today's sponsor of our video in Aura. Make sure you click the link inside the description of the video as well. Talking about the Cowboys in terms of free agency, what they have and what they haven't done. That's right. They haven't done much of anything, but they're not in a position to do so. And this is all in the backdrop of this whole thing with Dak Prescott. Not just the contract, but now, of course, the allegations that have been brought as far as the sexual assault charge or allegation has been brought as far as that is concerned as well. We'll have more on that a little bit later on in the show. But I'm curious to know from you what you're feeling as far as the Cowboys are concerned when it comes to their free agency or lack thereof. Obviously having to get Dak done, CD, Micah done, and all the things that have come with this. Because here's where I am with this right now. The Cowboys are looking at their situation with Mike McCarthy in the final year of his five-year deal. They brought in Mike Zimmer as the new defensive coordinator to replace Dan Quinn, who, of course, is the head coach in Washington. They're looking at their salary cap books, not just for 2024, but also 2025. And They're not in a position to really make a lot of moves because they got to pay the piper now based on all the kicking of the can that they've done over the last three years. This team is looking a lot like a team that's making a final stand and saying, this is it with this group. And while, yeah, there are going to be some departures because we didn't want to be in the Tyler Biotis sweepstakes. We didn't feel like we were going to be able to pay what the market commanded he would potentially get. The same with Tony Pollard in terms of the $8 million a season that he's getting on average from the Tennessee Titans. The Cowboys, as rich of a franchise as they are, the most valuable franchise in all the sports, acting like some real broke boys right now based off of what they have and what they don't have to be able to sign players going forward for the rest of this offseason. And I don't want to hear, especially when folks come to me and say, Kevin, don't you go crying about the idea that the Cowboys can't sign any players because they got to do Dak, they got to sign CD, they got to sign Micah. You won't hear that from me. Because here's my point with this. It's not Dak Prescott's job. It's not CeeDee Lamb's job. It damn sure ain't Micah Parsons' job to manage the salary cap of the Cowboys. The NFL stands for not for long. And these players know that they got to extract as much value as they can out of their particular team in order to maximize their value as players in the National Football League because all the money that's there to be made You've got to make it as quickly as you can. If you're Micah, 
if you're CD, you're trying to get as many contracts as you possibly can to be able to maximize your earning potential in the National Football League. Hell, the NFL is handing out $100 million guaranteed deals to guys like Kirk Cousins, who in his mid-30s coming off a torn Achilles because the Atlanta Falcons are desperate for a quarterback. That is what the NFL, especially with the quarterback market, will show you is that you can get your value if you can command it somewhere and you will find a team that will give it to you. And you've seen the bounce back of the running back market a little bit with the deals with Tony Pollard, obviously for Derrick Henry. You saw Joe Mixon be traded to the tech, the Houston Texans. There's a lot going on in NFL free agency. But the point here is if you're a player, especially for the Dallas Cowboys, you need to hold Jerry and Stephen Jones over a barrel, Dak Prescott, in order to get as much value as you believe that you're worth. Because no matter what, we know how dangerous the NFL game is. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I will never, ever, Chris Jericho, begrudge a player for getting as much value, for getting as much money as they believe that they're worth in order to play in the National Football League because of how inherently dangerous and violent the game is. I don't care how soft it's become over the last several years. Dangerous is the game of football, and if you're going to play it for hundreds of millions of dollars, get as many hundreds of million dollars as possible and put the onus on the team to manage the salary cap to put you in the best position, Dak, Micah, CD, in order to be successful and win in the National Football League and not worry about what the salary cap is supposed to be. Because they're one of the things that bother me most about Tom Brady's career. Well, yeah, Tom Brady was the ultimate winner in the NFL with seven Super Bowl championships. My man constantly was taking less money to be the quarterback of the New England Patriots. And it put an unexpected, it put an unrealistic expectation, I should say, on other players to do the same at the quarterback position. That should never be the case for a quarterback. You get as much as you can when you can get it to be able to make yourself the most money that you can. And Dak Prescott should do the same for the Cowboys. Ultimately here, the Cowboys are in trouble. For those who hadn't seen it coming, you may not necessarily have been paying attention. Again, you can leave a comment in the chat as well. Let me know how you're feeling. Give me your thoughts because I want to know whether it be questions about how you feel about the Cowboys comments or the Mavericks, whatever. This is an open show. Let me know how you feel and you can talk about it here on the gray area podcast. But for me, the Cowboys are in trouble because they got a lame duck coach, a quarterback who can look at a situation and say, you know what? I'll play out the final year of my contract, make the $59 million on the cap hit that I've got to make this year. And next thing you know, I can walk into free agency free and clear. And guess what? You can't tag me and you can't trade me because I have a no trade clause and a no franchise tag clause in my deal and Dak Prescott knows when he hits free agency next year if he does with the Dallas Cowboys and leaves them he will become one of the highest if not the highest paid quarterback in the history of the NFL and the Cowboys will be looking around trying to find themselves a quarterback to which I ask you this question do you trust the Dallas Cowboys to find a quarterback to be able to lead them in the next decade because the two that they found and Tony Romo and Dak Prescott, they lucked into. One was a fourth-round compensatory pick, and you know the story of Tony Romo. I mean, it was an undrafted quarterback. This is where the Dallas Cowboys are in terms of the decisions that they've got to make. But at the same time, they can only blame themselves for where they are. Tyron Smith may not be back with this team either, but the lack of activity that you've seen in free agency doesn't bother me at all. In fact was expected based on what the Cowboys situation was. So I had a ball. If you didn't see me on Twitter on Monday, I was having an absolute blast, tweeting away, laughing at the Cowboys, all kinds of stuff. Because, you know, it is what it is when it comes to the Cowboys. Uh, Shout out to my man, the Morning Woodsman. Go Mavs. Yeah, we'll talk some Mavs as well. Appreciate him being a Gray Area Club member. If you want to, you could join the Morning Woodsman as well. Uh, become a great area club member, uh, a couple bucks a month if you want to subscribe to the content here that I'm putting out here on YouTube. So shout out to the uh, the Morning Woodsman for hanging out with me here on the Gray Area Podcast. As we're live on YouTube, throw in your comments, questions and stuff in the chat as well. I'll be taking your questions 
throughout the course of the show as well. So if you want to talk about the Mavs, the Cowboys, the NBA, the NFL, whatever the case may be, you can throw it in the chat and we'll have a conversation about it. I'll also, throw in the StreamYard link as well. So if you want to hop in on the show, you can uh, do that as well as I throw that in there. Look at me doing technology and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you want to hop in on the show as well, you can click that link. And you can come in and we can uh, chat as well throughout the course of the show if you've got stuff that you want to talk about. But yeah, for the Cowboys, who boy, they got to figure it out. And they've got to figure it out with a quarterback who may be in a little bit of trouble. Obviously, we've been talking about Dak Prescott in terms of his contract situation. Dak Prescott is also in some legal uh, troubles as well, as we have seen that there's been a lawsuit filed against him, and he has filed a countersuit as he believes someone is trying to extort him to the tune of $100 million. Obviously, the news being, and I want to make sure that we get this right, so I'm going to read a little bit here, so bear with me. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott filed a civil lawsuit on Monday in which he accuses a woman and her attorneys of attempting to extort $100 million from him by making false allegations of sexual assault. Now, Prescott is seeking monetary relief in excess of a $1 million, according to the suit that was filed in Collin County, Texas, and obtained by the athletic. According to the suit, uh, the woman's representatives, Bethel and Yol Zahahi, uh, sent a letter to Prescott's attorneys on January 16th detailing an alleged encounter between Prescott and the woman that took place on February 2nd, 2017 in Plano, Texas, after the end of Prescott's rookie year in the NFL. Per the suit, the woman said she was willing to forgo criminal charges against Prescott and disclosing that information to the public in exchange for $100 million. Now, of course, Prescott's attorneys, uh, his attorney, I should say, Levi McCatherin, denied the validity of the claim of sexual assault, saying, quote, to be clear, Mr. Prescott has never engaged in any non-consensual sexual conduct with anyone. Lies hurt, especially malicious lies. We will not allow the defendant and her legal team to profit from this attempt to extort millions from Mr. Prescott, end quote. Now, the woman's attorney has also now made a radio appearance on 105.3 The Fan and did so on Tuesday, where the attorney is saying that Prescott raped his client. And not only are they seeking a civil suit, but they're possibly, possibly, excuse me, is coming criminal charges as well now folks have been jumping all over this on social media accusing the cowboys of some conspiracy to try and slander dak prescott's name because of the timing of not only the allegation but also the appearance of the attorney on the radio station that happens to broadcast Dallas Cowboys football games. You may know them as my former employer in 105.3 The Fan. And here is where I want to go with this conversation because the, the allegations are obviously serious. Dak Prescott feeling and obviously stating through his attorney that no such account happened while the accuser is saying that this definitely did take place and is not only willing to file a civil suit, but possibly bring criminal charges as well. And here is where all of this to me is really, really needing of discussing. It's very hard to discuss these topics in terms of what we look through in terms of the lens of sports, because as you and I discuss these things, we're looking at a lot of different aspects, whether it be the player itself, the player that plays for the Dallas Cowboys, what's involved here in terms of the allegations, the money that's involved here, and the fact that the, Dak Prescott is involved in contract negotiations with the Dallas Cowboys that may make him the highest paid player in the history of the National Football League. But here is where the rubber meets the road here. Whether this actually took place or not, it has to be taken with the seriousness of any particular allegation. And from both sides, you have to understand what may be going on here from the accuser side for her to have to relitigate what was an alleged action that she believes took place and to relitigate that over and over and over again and the mental and emotional trauma that she has to put herself through in order to recount what possibly took place according to her and then being to have to be taken through 
the legal system, whether it be a civil suit, whether it be a criminal trial, all the things that come with the emotions and the damage that comes with having to talk about this over and over again, there's a level of sensitivity that has to be understood here. And then even on the side of Dak Prescott, for someone who has been accused, obviously him feeling like there was no such encounter that took place for him and all the things that he's going through right now, having just become a father for the first time, dealing with all the pressures that comes with not only being in the public eye and playing for the Dallas Cowboys, going through contract negotiations, a very public form of negotiations with this football team and all of the ramifications that come with that. There is a understanding on both sides of here that needs to be taken place to ensure that you and I have a better and clearer picture on how to move forward in discussing this topic. Because here's one thing that I've learned, especially being in this medium in sports. We are not good at discussing these things. And at the same time, when we do have the opportunity to discuss them, there isn't the level of nuance provided in order to provide a clear picture from both sides on what is happening and to give us a better idea on how to inform ourselves on how to talk about these topics going forward. But yet and still, it is my job and those who are in this space to have that level of discussion and candid discussion with each and every one of you and to understand that there has to be sensitivity understood on both sides here, no matter how you may feel about the accuser or the one who is being accused as well. Because whether you feel like Dak Prescott is innocent or you feel like he's guilty in either the law in and of itself in terms of a civil or a criminal suit or in the court of public opinion, all of this has to be played out. But most importantly, the allegations have to be taken seriously no matter what. Because no matter who you are, whether you're Dak Prescott, whether you're Deshaun Watson, in any number of athletes who have been finding themselves in this position, the rush to judgment, whether it be for those who we believe is to be accused and to be found guilty or those who are not to be found guilty, that is the part where we kind of get sideways with all of this. But for Dak Prescott, look, what he has to do in this situation and what it appears that he's already done it appears that he's already gone on the offensive with this and vehemently denying the allegations that has been levied against him. Meanwhile, the attorney for the accuser has gone on the offensive and spoken out on the airways on radio to provide their side. Now, the interview in and of itself, seeking to have the answers be brought to in light in terms of you know neutrality, look, the people who are going to have to discuss this, listen to the interview, decide for yourself how you feel about it, and then move forward from there. Because no matter how this ends or how this plays out, someone and multiple people are going to be left damaged here, no matter what the outcome is. And that is the saddest part of when things like this take place. And hopefully the truth is found out and brought to light based on what has been alleged and accused by this woman and how Dak Prescott and his people have felt like he has been wrongly accused here. No matter how this ends, someone is going to get hurt here. And you and I have to exercise a level of sensitivity to that because no matter what, these things don't necessarily play themselves out in black and white, and nor would they. Because when you have allegations, especially of sexual assault, no matter who is doing the accusing or who is being accused, Everyone in here has to be able to find a measure of resolve to be able to withstand everything that comes with an investigation, dealing with the court of public opinion, and everything else that has been done in terms of the opining by you and I and others about how we feel about the situation and what it looks like going forward from here. And for Prescott and his people and for this woman and for her, all of this will now be suddenly played out. But what I have found most distasteful is the idea that, look, that the Joneses would be, look, the Joneses for all the things that we have learned about them throughout the years and everything else that you and I may feel about the Jones family in terms of how they run their football team, I would find it very hard to believe that they would engage in some type of conspiracy to try and slander their quarterback and have someone appear on a radio station at their behest in order to bring this to light in terms of a radio interview. I don't see that happening. Now, for folks who look at the timing of all this and how it's gone down, you can feel how you want to feel about it. 
but there is not good business in publicly slandering your quarterback and trying to devalue him, no matter how you may feel about his play on the football field and whether or not he can bring you a Super Bowl championship. That's beside the point here. There are very real people with very real feelings and very real accusations that have been brought that need to be dealt with here. And you and I have to make sure that we maturely handle this discussion in a way that's productive and allows everyone to move forward with a level of understanding and nuance that is befitting of having this conversation here today. And I don't know if necessarily that's going to happen because if you've seen some of the reaction on social media so far in response to that interview that the lawyer did today and how people are feeling about whether or not he should have appeared on radio or not, oh boy, it is some nasty work out here in these social media streets. And I refuse, personally refuse to engage in such discussion. That is why you and I are talking right here right now because you and i can have that discussion here in a civilized format and not leave it to the contents of social media to go back and forth where i have found throughout the course of time that discussions whether it be serious or not they are best suited for twitter instagram facebook whatever your choice of social media is it ain't worth it on those particular platforms because there isn't enough context there isn't enough light and ingenuity for folks to be able to have these conversations in a public and civil manner for us to be able to have productive conversations about it. It simply doesn't work. And it doesn't quite work in this conversation either, especially with the sensitive matter that we're dealing with here. But for Prescott, who has been a Walter Payton man of the year, he has got to go through this and understand what is being levied against him and ensure that he is doing everything that he can if he believes that he is innocent to fight these baseless charges that he may feel like are basis. And for the individual who is bringing the accusations, think about what she is putting herself through in order to be in this position. And I'm not saying that there aren't attempts of extortion all the time that we do and do not hear about. And I'm not saying this is one of those cases. What I'm saying is, listen, Make the judgment for yourself, but do so with all the information as much as you can gain in order to make that decision. Because to make a decision rash or otherwise based off of what someone may or may not say and not having the complete and full picture of it, that does a disservice for you and it does a disservice for me. So with all that being said, this is something that you and I are going to be, I'm sure, watching quite a bit over the next several weeks as this continues to unfold, especially given the fact that Dak Prescott is going to be the one going through it and dealing with it in a very public way. And that is the nastiest part about all of this. This is going to get played out in the public. But he is a public figure. He is the quarterback of the most popular franchise in all of sports, the most popular franchise in North American sports, the most valuable franchise in all of sports as well and this is where we are uh let's see here we're taking i'm taking your questions here we're live on the gray area podcast here on my youtube channel at kevin grace Sports. appreciate you hanging out with me as well throw your comments and questions in the chat i'm gonna be doing some q a as well throughout the cor- portion throughout the course of the show i should say so throw those in and i'll post them up here uh like this one uh from bd why is it so hard being a Cowboys fan? I'd rather tank next year and get more draft and comp picks and cap space and go for it in 2025. Because here's the thing. Cowboys not going to ever be bad enough to be able to get to a point where they're tanking. They're not going to tank it out. Now, here's where I contend that they could if they wanted to. No matter what, if Jerry likes just being in the news, if he wants his football team to just constantly be in the news, if they tank... Or if they're successful, guess what we're going to do? We're going to talk about the Cowboys all of the time. But at the same time, look, for the Cowboys, they are in position where they've got to try to find a way to thread a difficult needle here, which is do we continue to stay with the quarterback who is good enough to be able to get you to the postseason but hasn't been good enough to take you deep enough to the postseason to give you confidence to continue to invest in the team that with better players around him, he can eventually take your team to the Super Bowl or do you risk blowing it up? Because if you decide that this quarterback isn't good enough to take you there, then you might just play it out and then start afresh next year and not extend him and allow him to walk in free agency. 
to again, that brings me back to the question I posed earlier. Do you think that this franchise is good enough to find his heir apparent in order to make this franchise successful with a new quarterback and possibly a new head coach and a new entire staff altogether? Because I can't imagine if the Cowboys did not make at least the NFC Championship game that Mike McCarthy would be back. So not only are you looking at a new quarterback, possibly, you're looking at an entire new coaching staff. And for Jerry Jones, I don't know if he's really willing to take that risk for that football team. So, yeah, the idea of just tanking it out next year and then getting a bunch of comp picks and then trying to figure it out. Look, one thing we got to quit asking Will McClay to do is to be a damn magician every single year to try and resurrect the way that this team likes to go about it from a free agency standpoint. So I don't know. We will see how that goes forward as well from uh, the morning woodsman. Tanking costs money for Jerry. It'll never happen. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever get to a point where he would tank the thing out. But if he could, if he would, I don't think it'll be as big of a hit as folks tend to think it might be, given the fact that his situation. Uh, from BD one more time, uh, hold on to Dak and play hardball. It's a $59 million hit. But eat it this year. What's the purpose of trading a former top three pick at quarterback for nothing? I don't think so. Yeah, that whole Trey Lance thing. I, oh, look, if Mike McCarthy is around here, maybe he could develop Trey Lance into the next guy, but I don't know if that necessarily is the case. And I don't know if Trey Lance is going to be good enough to be that guy anyway. But I get the point and idea of letting Dak play out on the uh, $59 million cap it and go from there. Uh, from Brian Russell. Uh, Jerry got me again saying we're going all in, and I got excited, and it was all BS. Let me tell you something. Jerry know how to pull them strings, doesn't he? Then Ward Sal's he'd be tossing out there. And again, if you go back and listen to my episode that I had with Michael Gelkin of the Dallas Morning News, he said, look, the Cowboys themselves believe that they've been all in for the past three years. That's why they're in the position that they are in now. They've kicked everything down the road for the last several years, whether it was a good decision or not. Now they find themselves in a spot where they really can't bring in anyone externally because they don't have the money to do so, even with the explosion of the salary cap. That's why they're managing things, not just for this year, but for next year as well. Because if you do re-sign Dak Prescott, you can clear out some cap space, but they don't know if they necessarily want to do that and just let him play it out. And then you still got Mike and CD who are going to become the highest paid players in the history of the league at each of their positions, most likely that you've got to deal with as well. So they've got to figure out a way to get this going through here. But yeah, Jerry got everybody all hot and bothered about the idea that they were going to be all in, knowing good and full well that they have been all in really for each of the last three years at this point. And that is what makes losing not just this year, this past year to the Green Bay Packers, as far as the wild card round was concerned. And then the previous two years losing to the San Francisco 49ers was concerned. That's what makes it so hard is that they have thought for the last three years building up to this past season that they had a team that could finally make that run and they had been doing everything that they felt they needed to in order to put that position, that team in position to win and they still couldn't do it. Think about it. They got Stephon Gilmore. They got Brandon Cooks. They kicked the can down the road to be able to have more money when they restructure Michael Gallup's deal. Michael Gallup's deal. My man who had signed that contract coming off the torn ACL. They restructured and got things done with Zach Martin to make sure he got his money. They pulled all kinds of levers over the last three years to try and get this team to the point where they would succeed this past season, and they still couldn't do it. So the Jones family may be looking at a situation where they feel like they don't want to invest anymore in this team, let it play out, and then start a new going into 2025, to which I say, okay, good luck with that. We'll see. But I get it, Brian. The fr Look, the frustration is there. I'm a third-generation Cowboys fan. Someone who's covered this team obviously understands what's going on here. Yeah, I get the frustration if you feel like that would be the case uh, from BD. Is the plan to push – Tyler Smith back at left tackle. He was basically an all-pro left guard, but now Tyrant is out of the plan. That depends on who you ask, because I thought when they drafted Tyler Smith that he would be the heir apparent to Tyron, and that would be the move once you decide to move off of Tyron Smith, and then you go find yourself a new left guard. Now the Cowboys may be thinking about, well, let's go draft ourselves a new tackle 
and put him out there left tackle to which I say, is that a good idea for a contract for a quarterback who's in his contract year? Because if I'm Dak Prescott, I don't want a rookie protecting my blind side. Yeah. The, the, the difficult transition that may, the transition that may need to be made by Tyler Smith may be a little more difficult, but at the same time, I would much rather have a guy that's played the position before be kicked out to left tackle and then be able to play that position there and then find yourself an interior guard that can be able to handle things on the inside. But yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea. I would move Tyler Smith out to left tackle personally. That's what I would do because not only do you need a new lineman, you need what two new linemen at this point because you need a new center and you also need, depending on what you decide to do with Tyler Smith, a new left guard or a new left tackle. So at minimum, there are going to be at least two new offensive line starters for the Cowboys this upcoming season, to which I say, yeah, I don't know if that's ideal or not if you're a Cowboys fan feeling like they should be quote-unquote all in based off of what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish going into 2024 and beyond. But trust me, I get the frustration from Cowboys fans. I'm right there with you and understand how you feel based on what the Cowboys haven't done, what they should do, and what they need to do going forward from there uh it's the gray area live podcast here on the gray area uh, on my youtube channel here at kevin gray sports really appreciate y'all hanging out with me here on the show again you can leave your comments questions in the chat i'll answer those uh, i want to do a q a as well so if you got questions about anything throw them in the chat and i'll answer them throughout the course uh, of the show uh from brian i'll throw that up here real quick I really thought he was going to get Derrick Henry, but then I was thinking this is the Cowboys and they don't do stuff like that. To which, Brian, you're right. Because the funniest thing about all this was everybody's like, oh, man, Derrick Henry that bought a house in Dallas. He's going to come to the Dallas Cowboys. Look, the Cowboys weren't willing to spend $4 million on Zach Moss. You really thought that they were going to be in the Derrick Henry sweepstakes, given the fact that the, K- the running back market had increased based off the prices that we've been seeing? Come on, man. Cowboys don't have that kind of money to be spending on that. And if they did, that's not what they do. They don't spend money on big names and the thought that they would actually bring in somebody of significance wasn't going to happen. You know why? Because it never happens. And my biggest chief complaint for the Cowboys over the years has been no matter how well that they've drafted, they have never, I should say really over the past now 12 years, they have not gotten the kind of guys that will supplement you in free agency. You know, so it is what it is, but we'll see moving forward from there. Again, throw your questions and comments in the chat here on the Gray Area Live podcast. I want to touch on the Mavericks real quick as well, because the Mavericks may be getting it together a little bit. They've won three straight after losing uh, five of their last six games as well. Uh, After winning seven straight games, they beat the Miami Heat. They beat the Detroit Pistons by 18. Then they put a beat down on the Chicago Bulls by 35. On Monday to now, they're still in eighth, but at the same time, they're playing a little bit better. So we'll see if the Mavericks are getting it together, but they've got, what, 17 games left in the regular season, and they've got to find a way to get things rolling as they continue to try to climb to the top six of the West, and we'll see if they can do so. Inconsistency up and down this team throughout the course of the season, especially with their defense, which has not been great all season, but during that seven-game win streak, they had a defensive rating that was number two in the league. When they lost five of six, defensive rating was dead last. Last few games, been playing a lot better defensively, especially holding Chicago to 92 points as well. So we'll see if the Mavericks can figure out a way to get things together from there. Daniel Gafford has been great over the last three games. My man's made 28 consecutive field goals, which is an NBA record. Him and Lively combined to go 20 of 21 for 42 points, dominating the Chicago Bulls inside the paint. Luka Doncic just got another triple-double. He's got seven consecutive triple-doubles now, had his 35-point and 30-point triple-double streak broken in Chicago, but my man still went off for, what, 27, 14, and 10-something absurd that he had against the Chicago Bulls. So Mavericks playing a little bit better. We'll see if they can continue the momentum because the Western Conference is getting wild right now. Um, back to BD real quick. KD, or KG, I don't know who KD is, but KG, uh, I'd allow you to be GM tomorrow. What two moves are you making or implementing without Jerry in the way? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, what moves am I making? Two moves that I'm making. Uh, one, I'm signing Dak Prescott to a contract extension. I'm doing that, number one. Uh, and then number two, hmm, I'm signing Tyra Smith back. Those would be the two moves that I would make. 
I would get Dak Prescott done, get him a contract extension, keep him around here for the next four or five years, and then I would bring Tyron Smith back for one more year and truly run it back one more time and give this team the best chance, especially offensively, to be able to make it happen. And that would be the two moves that I would make if Jerry was out of the way because I got to free up a bunch of cap space to try and get some guys in here, although it may be too late now given what is and what's not available on the market, but also for Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith was a second team all pro last year and play at an extremely high level. And what confuses me about the Cowboys in their unwillingness to bring back Tyron Smith, this is that you found a practice plan that worked for him. My man was able to sit throughout most of the week and then be able to show up on Sunday and ball out. And he played extremely well for the Cowboys last year. People have questions about some of his run blocking and some of the things as far as that. Look, he's what going to be in his 14th year this upcoming season. Yeah, there's going to be some natural decline there. But when he was on the field, he played at a very, very high level. Why not have your quarterback be protected by one of the best left tackles in all of football, even at this point in his career to where he's still earning all pro selection? So, yeah, the two moves I would make. Uh, get Dak Prescott done, get him a contract extension, and then sign Tyron Smith and bring him back to truly run it back one more time. If you're going to be looking at what the Dallas, or excuse me, what the Dallas Cowboys need to do, but that's what I would move. So hopefully that answers your question, BD. Uh, there, as far as what I would do if I was uh, running things for America's team in the Dallas Cowboys. It's the Great Area Live podcast here. Live, I'm on YouTube channel here at Kevin Gray Sports. Wanted to do a live pop-up show. I didn't get a chance to do the podcast on Monday, so I figured let me hang out with y'all for a little while here uh, on this Tuesday night and let you be able to throw in questions that you may have. So if you have some, you can throw them in the chat as well. If you got a super chat you want to throw in, go ahead and do that as well. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast as well. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. We've talked about Dak Prescott and the latest going on with him the lack of free agency movement uh, for the Cowboys. Obviously, NFL free agency has been bonkers so far already. My favorite move so far in NFL free agency, we talked about it just a second ago a little bit, but Derrick Henry signing with the Baltimore Ravens, I personally love that move. It's a football match made in football heaven with Derrick Henry signing with the Baltimore Ravens. That running game is going to be beastly to watch and whatever Derrick Henry has left the fact that he gets to now use it with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens I love that fit for him going forward there and we'll see how that works out in Baltimore but all roads go through the Kansas City Chiefs anyway who of course in a down year wound up winning the Super Bowl and finding a way to win another championship as Patrick Mahomes continues to stack up titles in Kansas City. But if you're asking me what my favorite move was so far in NFL free agency, yeah, I love the move that the Baltimore Ravens made in getting Derrick Henry and bringing him into the fold because he is going to bring a lot of attitude and nastiness to that run game. And shout out to the running back market. I mean, Saquon Barkley got a big payday from the Philadelphia Eagles to which, look, man, I don't know what's wrong with some of these former athletes. Tiki Barber, for example, talking about in I'm paraphrasing here that Saquon Barkley is dead to him. And in fact, I want to make sure I get this right because when I saw the comment, it almost made me laugh. Cause first of all, who really gives a damn what Tiki Barber got to say anyway. Uh, but also the way that he went about it, I'm just like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here he goes. Quote, uh, you're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck. You're dead to me. Which to which Saquon responded. Uh, you've been a hater since I got to New York and all the dead to me talk. Don't smile in my face when you see me in quote to which I say, whoo, I'm here for athlete beef. Definitely here for that. But at the same time, if you take Barber, shut the hell up. Like Saquon gave what he gave to the organization. And now he's going to play for a chief rival. Unfortunately, in my division with the Dallas Cowboys and play with the Philadelphia Eagles. It is what it is <laughs> from the morning. Woodsman. I think Tiki Barber has the IQ of a grapefruit. That's a, that's, a, that's a low bar. <laughs> that's a low bar for IQ for Tiki Barber. Um, but at the same time, yeah, happy for Saquon, man. Go get your payday. Look, the fact that the running back market was able to come back a little bit, yes, with the explosion of the salary cap uh, to help aid it a little bit, 
yeah, no harm, no foul, man. Tony Pollard being able to get his payday from the Tennessee Titans. And I never believed for one single solitary second a report that said that Tony Pollard would take less money to come back to the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, man, you play running back. If you don't go get all that money you can based on the position that you play, get up out of here and go get that money from Tennessee. And he was able to go back home to go play for, um, you know, Tennessee Titans um, for – Oh, did this just come through from uh, is this Nike's three? The Eagles got uh, CJ back. Are we talking about CJ Gardner Johnson? Did that happen? Am I missing that as it's happening? Let's see here. Oh, wow. That's hilarious. The Eagles are signing safety. Um, CJ Gardner Johnson. Uh, yeah, shout out to him. Okay. Wow. I'm just seeing that just now from Adam Schefter. That literally just happened. Um, okay. All right, well, good for them, I guess. Because that second look from the uh, from the Eagles fan there, uh, that Eagles secondary last year was not good. Uh, I know they got Darius Slade back there, but at the same time, yeah, that secondary was not great. Linebacker core not great. Uh, they've got to find a way to replace uh, their center position. I think they've got somebody there already. Uh, I believe the kid uh, Jurgens um, was going to step in and now play center possibly for them. Uh, in Philadelphia with Jason Kelsey's retirement. Fletcher Cox is gone, but they've been, look, they've been reloading. Uh, they got Huff from the J- from the Jets. As much as I despise the Philadelphia Eagles, Howie Roseman is one of the best GMs in all the NFL and keeps finding ways to make his football team better, and he's doing it again, uh, what it looks like, um, you know, with Johnson coming back to the fold. So what's that a three year deal worth up to $33, 33 million, not $33, $33 million. Okay. All right. Well, shout out to, uh, uh, CJ Garner Johnson for getting it, for getting it done for him. Uh, but Hey man, uh, appreciate you being an Eagles fan and hanging out here in the chat with me. So I uh, appreciate that, uh, from Brian. Uh, I'm so mad that everybody in the NFC East made moves and got well, got better. Well, besides the giants, there's still the giants. <laughs> Look, I don't care what move the Giants make. You know who still coaches them? Brian Dayball still coaches them. So, you know, I don't care what they do. Uh, and they still got Daniel Jones running around as quarterback. So, I, I look, they can go sign, you know, Jesus' second cousin. I, I don't care. That football team ain't good. It's not good at all because Daniel Jones is out there uh, still being their quarterback. And they still got Brian Dayball as their head coach. So, whatever. And now they don't have Saquon. So there, there is that. Another move that I did actually like, it's funny how the running backs, have, like I said, have made a little bit of a comeback in terms of the money that they're making. Uh, I really like the move that the Green Bay Packers made in bringing in Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, a former NFL rushing champion. Now the Packers did say goodbye to Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones decided, okay, well, I'll stick in the NFC North and go sign with the Minnesota Vikings, even though I have no idea who's playing quarterback because Kirk Cousins was able to con the Atlanta Falcons out of $100 million with his torn Achilles and still found a way to get a bunch of quarterback money uh, from the Falcons as they got their new man moving forward. But I like the move for Josh Jacobs to team up with Jordan Love. Think about it. An emerging Packers team that had to say goodbye to David Bakhtiari, who's been dealing with injuries over the last several years. Um, But at the same time, they got a terrific running back in Josh Jacobs. I like that move for them and what they were able to do to replace Aaron Jones. I think they're going to be a scary team because Jordan Love – Looks like in play, man. Jordan Love can ball. Uh, found that out, unfortunately, firsthand at AT&T Stadium during the wild card round that uh, Jordan Love can ball a little bit. Uh, from BD, any Leighton Van Der Esch updates? Can we sign Sha- – <laughs> now you trolling. Uh, can we sign Shaq Leonard now? No, man. No, we're not signing no Shaq Leonard. Are you kidding me? His back is about as tricked up as Peyton Manning was when they won the Super Bowl way back when. Uh, I-, I think it's over for Leighton Van Der Esch, to be quite honest with you. I don't think he's coming back to play football. Again, my man has been through numerous neck injuries. Uh, he's gone through a ton of injuries throughout the course of his career. And I don't think Leighton Van Der Esch will be playing football, um, at least for the Dallas Cowboys in 2024, which would be sad because he has been a trooper. He has done everything that he has could to keep his body on the football field. And his body just continues to uh, betray him over and over again, kind of like how Sean Lees did uh, here in Dallas as well. So, I feel bad for Lane Vanderish. Good dude, a guy that had gave his heart and soul to the Cowboys. I don't personally think, though, that Lane Vanderish is going to be playing uh, football again, at least for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, if he finds somewhere else to play, you know that's going to be up to him. But I don't think that the Cowboys uh, will be seeing Lane Vanderish in a Cowboy uniform uh, again, unfortunately. And Cowboys, look, 
we mentioned a little bit earlier, they need a linebacker. They need two offensive linemen. They need a running back. They need, you know, a safety. They, oh boy, the Cowboys need a bunch, not to mention a uh, linebacker, as we mentioned with uh, Leighton Van Der Esch. Like I said, I don't think he's playing football uh, ever again. And you trolling with that Shaq Leonard thing. Come on, man. That was funny because I was, <laughs> to be completely transparent, I was one of the ones like, hey, man, go sign Shaq Leonard. And then I started to hear some things about how my man's back might be, you know, kind of tricky. Mm, yeah, looks like the Cowboys dodged a bullet uh, in terms of that. Well, speaking of dodge bullets, look, I was one of the ones that wanted Jamal Adams way back when. And now Jamal Adams may not find himself on an NFL team. Who knows? But, you know, you live and you learn. You live and you learn throughout the course of time with all this. Um, but this is the part of the program where I open it up uh, to Q&A. If you got questions that you want to throw in to the chat, other than the ones that we have already been answering so far throughout the course of the show, uh, throw those in there. I would love to answer some of your questions here on the Gray Area Podcast. Again, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Kevin Gray Sports. Uh, give me a follow there. You can also um, download and subscribe to my podcast, the Inside the Mavs Podcast. It's the official Mavericks podcast of 97 One The Freak, as I'm the Mavericks pre and post game host there. And, of course, the Gray Area Podcast also. But, uh, yeah, if you got some questions that you want to throw in there in the last few minutes of the show, um, make sure you throw those in there. I try to do this podcast uh, three times a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I wasn't able to do it on Monday. had some stuff to do, so I wanted to at least give you all a little something before I give you my Wednesday episode as well and also hang out live. I don't get a chance to do it a lot live here on youtube so hopefully you'll have a chance to uh enjoy some of this as well as you've had a good time so far but you've got any questions throw those uh in the chat and we'll answer those before we get out of here um as nfl free agency continues several moves continue to be made uh it's about to be ncaa tournament time i've tried to watch a little more college basketball as the season has gone on houston's been out here balling obviously we saw south carolina and lsu uh, okay there are two ways to handle things in life, things with class and then like him, Mulkey. Now, long story short, you saw, you know, the little kerfuffle, the little brouhaha that took place between South Carolina and LSU uh, in the SEC championship game this past weekend. And this is why I love Don Staley, because she got up there. She apologized and looked. This is not the way we normally handle things here in South Carolina, this, that, and the third. And then you got Kim Mulkey, uh, the LSU head coach, who jumps up there on stage and says, uh, I wish he would have pulled Angel Reese's here. What? Come on, Kim. Like, this is this is why folks don't get down with you, Kim Mulkey. This is why they don't get down with you in that way. Uh, but college basketball for women has been incredible. Caitlin Clark is setting the world on fire. She's going to be in the WNBA this upcoming season. You know, shout out to her and her Iowa Hawkeyes for winning uh, a Big Ten championship as well. So college women's basketball has been spectacular. And that's interesting because, you know, the name recognition in women's college basketball is that much better than the men's game right now. And part of that is, at least in my humble opinion, you don't get to hardly know these guys anymore in the men's side because they are one. A lot of guys are one and done. The best ones are going to the league with after their first year in college. And you don't have guys sticking around anymore to play through their sophomore, junior, senior years where you're able to grow up with these players and be able to understand and know who these players are. So that by the time they leave to go to the league, you have some kind of name recognition. I remember the days of watching the J.J. Reddicks, the Jay Williams, the, the Jerry Stackhouses, the Vince Carters, like all of these guys, the Rasheed Wallaces of the world, like all these guys that you can think of, you know, the Juan Dixons of the world, you know, the Paul Pierces, all the big time names that you saw go through the college ranks and then be able to follow them to the pros. You don't have that necessarily uh, anymore. Um, let's see from Brian Russell here. I want to know what's going to be different this year than the last three years um, are a season team. I, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the uh, to the Cowboys. I don't know. <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know what's going to be different because if they couldn't get it done with the amount of talent that they've had over the each of the last three years, I don't know when they get it done at this point. So I don't know what's going to be different. We're going to find out. Uh, when this upcoming season starts. But, um, yeah, that's a great question. Look, that's not necessarily a generally a great answer for a sports broadcaster to give, 
when someone asks you a sports question. But when it comes to the Cowboys, who the hell knows? I have no idea at this point because they're not doing it in free agency. They may be deciding that this may be it for this group here based on what they have, and they've already let a bunch of pieces go because they are not a better team today than what they were when they ended the season. They're just not. I don't care how you feel about Tyler Biotish or Tony Pollard or any of these dudes. They're not a better football team than what they were when they ended the season, and that's just a fact. Um, from Chris Johnson, do they look at free agency to tell them how they think the draft is going to go? Well, if anything, we knew that they're going to need a draft or running back. Regardless if they kept Tony Pollard or not, they were going to need a draft or running back. They needed an offensive lineman. You know, the expectation was that Tyron Smith most likely wasn't going to be able to come back anyway. Excuse me, after the season that he had, they're going to need an offensive lineman. They were definitely going to need to draft a linebacker. Like the things that we knew coming into this offseason that were needs for the Cowboys. Those haven't changed. Now, some of those things, the list has been added to, obviously. But, yeah, we knew they were going to need to draft a running back. We knew that they were going to need to draft a linebacker. We knew that they were going to need to draft an offensive lineman. We knew at least those three things coming in. They need interior help because there's questions about Mozzie Smith and whether or not he could take the next step going into next year. Linebacker, we just talked about, you may need you know some help in the back end of your secondary in terms of safety. Yeah, the needs necessarily haven't changed, and what they haven't done in free agency hasn't necessarily informed me on anything else different than what they've needed to or not needed to do to improve this football team. So, yeah, as you look through all your 100 million mock drafts and Mel Kuyper 2.4.5.10.0 drafts, whatever, yeah, the Cowboys' needs have been pretty much the same, you know, as it's gone. Uh, from Chris, we rely too heavily on draftees to be heavy contributors. And that was the disappointing part about last year was the fact that, you know, your 2023 draft class wasn't good. I mean, Mozzie Smith, your first round pick. Yes, it's difficult for defensive tackles to make the transition, especially the way that Michigan, you know, gets down with their defensive tackles. You know, it's a little bit different, but it is what it is there uh, from BD. How do you like the new math starting five? You think Gafford is going to be the long-term starter over Lively? Well, look, they're 5-0 and right now are the Mavericks when Gafford starts for them. And it's funny that you brought that question up, BD, because, you know, what I said going into the season was I thought that the Mavericks needed to acquire a veteran center to play in front of Lively to allow him to come along slowly as a rookie to be able to grow within the Mavericks and grow as the season has gone on. I thought they would go get a guy like Clint Capella, who they were linked to, you know, during the off season. And it's kind of worked in reverse. Lively has been so good at the beginning of the season that they were like, Oh, well maybe we have found our starting center. Who was a 19 now 20 year old. Let's go get some veteran big man help behind him to be able to have someone to play like him in part of that second unit. And they went and got a guy in Daniel Gaffer who's been really good for them and he's provided them, you know, the shot blocking, the rebounding. He's great in pick and roll. You've seen what he's been doing, as I mentioned, making 28 straight field goals. Like he's been doing quite a bit for them. Um, next year, I think they will have Lively as their starter. But if it ain't broke right now, don't fix it and allow Gaffer to remain as the starter. Because here's the thing with you got two athletic bigs like, you know, Lively and Gafford, you don't have to necessarily change your style of play because they're both good in pick and roll. They're both really good in transition. They love to get out on the break. They can finish, you know, devastatingly good around the rim. You know, defensively, both of them can block shots and alter shots, you know, at the rim as well. So I like what they're doing there. And if you're the Mavericks, yeah, leave Gafford in there for now and let him continue to do his thing and allow live to take some of that pressure. And I think that's the biggest thing with a question like that when it comes to Gafford in the starting lineup. Take some of that pressure off of Lively to have to be the starter, and then you can go on from there to allow him to be as effective as he has been. I mean, they went a combined, what was it, 20 of 21 for 42 points in the win, and the blowout went over the Bulls, and they looked great together. And I thought Luka was spectacular. His outlet passing is incredible. The only person I've seen as a better outlet passer than Luka at this point is uh, Kevin Love. Kevin Love was a fantastic outlet passer. Luka Doncic was spectacular in that uh, in that way there. Um, from you know the deal, because I know the deal. 
uh, instead of having spring break on his yacht, maybe Jerry should realize free agency is part of team building and not through the draft. How long have we been saying that you know the deal? Because clearly you know the deal. How long have we been saying that? Cowboys do really well in drafting, but they haven't supplemented it with you know free agent signings. Because I was pounding, pounding on the table a couple of years ago for them to sign Bobby Wagner because guess what? They need a linebacker help. Last year, hey, Bobby Wagner's available. Go sign him. All he does is go back to Seattle and have a career high, 183 tackles for them. Hey, Bobby Wagner's available. Why don't you go sign him? I don't know if they'll do it now because obviously, you know, he's a couple years older than when he was when they should have signed him two years ago. The point being, Cowboys don't do that, and they haven't done it well uh, over the last, now what, 12 years? Brandon Carr signing scared them off so bad. They gave that man $50 million, and he Brandon Carr was a good player here. He just wasn't the dynamic player that they thought they were getting for $50 million. They've been scared off of free agents, significant ones, ever since then. Go figure. Um, but, yeah, I, I get your point. You know the deal because, like I said, you know the deal. Last few minutes before we get out of here on the Gray Area Podcast. Again, if you got any other questions, throw them into the chat here before we go uh, on this Tuesday. And again, I appreciate you hanging out with me for uh, the time being here. As uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of flavor on the uh, the live show. Again, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Kevin Gray Sports and download and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast for free. And uh, let me know what you're feeling. And if you got any other questions, throw them in here before I get out of here on this Tuesday night because, you know, uh, it's getting a little bit later in the evening, but yeah, still a lot to go this week. Max get back on the floor on Wednesday. They start the first night of a back to back. They take on um, Golden State on Wednesday at the AAC. Then they travel to Oklahoma City on Thursday night for a nine o'clock game before they come back home on Sunday to play the reigning NBA champion uh, Denver Nuggets. So that should be a lot of fun over the next three games. Going to find out a lot about the Mavericks over the next three games because like I mentioned, they went on a seven-game win streak, then lost five to six. Now they've won three in a row. It's been an up and down roller coaster seesaw type of thing they've been doing. Haven't necessarily been feeling it, but yet here we are. Uh, so we'll see what the Mavericks got over the next uh, few games with Golden State. No Stephen Curry, who's already been ruled out for that game for Golden State against the Mavericks. Uh, and then they face Shea Gilgis Alexander, legitimate MVP candidate. And then they face another one in Nikola Jokic. Hey, man, real quick, did you see Nikola Jokic last night? My man went for 37, 15, and 12 in a win for the Nuggets. As they, uh, I think it was the Raptors that they beat. Nikola Jokic is probably going to win the league's MVP again because he's been spectacular. Um, one more from uh, You Know the Deal. If you're Jerry Jones, what's your first priority when it comes to the Cowboys moving forward? Firing himself. <laughs> firing himself and firing Stephen Jones. I guess in the order that would be fire Stephen Jones and then fire himself. Um, but we know that's not happening. Uh, first order of business, as I mentioned earlier, get Dak Prescott under contract. Get him his long-term deal and then figure it out from there. You've watched the Philadelphia Eagles. They signed their quarterback to a long-term deal. What do they do? They continue to take swings at it. They go add a Saquon Barkley this year. Like They continue to go and figure it out like go figure it out and if you're jerry jones yeah that would be my first priority fire steven and then uh fire myself after that and then go forward from there but no the first thing seriously would be to get dak prescott done and then uh go on from there so that's what it is all right we're gonna get out of here on this tuesday again appreciate you hanging out with me here on the gray area podcast live show Hopefully you had a good time as much as I did. Hopefully we'll do this a little bit more often, uh, but I'm going to make sure I get you the episodes that you expect every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Gray Area Podcast. Please give the podcast a five-star rating. Uh, write a review for it while you're there, and also check out my work for Inside the Mavs, the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak. And thank you to our sponsor of today's video and podcast, Aura. Make sure you click the link. Uh, in the description that I will have in the video afterwards and sign up for that as well. That is it for this episode of the Gray Area Podcast. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Peace.